I'm Douglas Ebersole. I'm an uh, interventional cardiologist and technical diver. I've been asked to speak about patent foramen ovale and decompression sickness. Uh, there's a lot of misconceptions about what that is. A patent foramen ovale is actually not an illness in and of itself. It's a physiologic uh, condition that is intended to be present while we're a fetus to allow blood flow to go from the placenta across the atrial septum and go to the oxygen, go into the, um, the systemic circuit. When we're born, the physiology is such that this will usually slam shut and seal over the first two years of life. However, about 25% or so of people, this never completely seals and we're left with a trap door of sorts that can allow in a diving situation bubbles to cross and put people at a higher incidence of decompression sickness. If you look at the data that we have, it would suggest that your risk of decompression sickness with a PFO is increased about five-fold which from a relative standpoint sounds very concerning. However, the absolute numbers are still quite low. If you look at recreational diving where the incidence of decompression sickness is probably about two uh, episodes per 10,000 dives, and you multiply that by a factor of five, you're still left with an absolute incidence of only about one in a thousand. So the risk is still very, very small. However, if you do have re repetitive episodes of decompression sickness, it may be something you want to do about. The incidence of decompression sickness in the diving population is so low, yet the prevalence of PFOs is so high, it doesn't justify screening. So we clearly do not recommend people be screened for a PFO prior to diving because, again, the incidence of decompression sickness is low even if you have this. The time we worry is in certain forms of decompression sickness. If people have neurologic problems, if they have vestibular problems, or if they have recurrent episodes of decompression sickness, which are, quote, undeserved or unexpected, uh, that would be a time to potentially look for a PFO. If you had that, there are several things that you can do. One, of course, is to stop diving. Uh, this is being marketed to technical divers, so most people who are technical divers are not going to take the option of stopping diving. However, that's clearly an option. Uh, if you don't take that option, the most common thing to do is just change your diving habits. The problem is not the PFO, the problem is the nitrogen bubble or the inert gas bubble. So anything you can do to lower your bubble load, whether that be diving shallower, diving fewer dives per day, uh, diving richer mixes, doing longer safety stops, padding your decompression, all of those things actually will lessen your bubble load and allow you to have a lower incidence of decompression sickness. And that works for a large number of people. In selected individuals, we'll actually offer them PFO closure. Now, this used to be a major surgical procedure requiring a thoracotomy, uh, general anesthesia, and multiple days in the hospital. The current technique can be done through a needle stick in the groin. Uh, it's an outpatient procedure. It takes about 30 minutes, has a very, very high success rate, but does have some small risk of complications in the 1 or maybe 2% range. So it's not something we'd go into lightly, but for selected individuals uh, can be uh, a choice for them. In terms of outcomes, what information do we have? We know that there's at least one study that has shown that diving conservatively in a group of divers uh, who found they had PFO lessened their incidence of decompression sickness on future dives. Uh, we have some chamber dives in people with PFO closure showing that the incidence of recurrent decompression sickness is lessened by PFO closure. And currently, uh, myself and Dr. Petar de Noble at Dan are doing a prospective study clinically looking at divers who have patent foramen ovale and have had decompression sickness and looking at people both who have left this alone and opted to dive more conservatively or people who have opted to have the PFO closed and see how they do in a five-year follow-up. Uh, and if anybody listening to this is interested in that study or has somebody who may be interested in that study, uh, Dr. DeNoble or myself can be contacted through the uh, DAN website. Thank you for your attention.